working in it. We got a problem. Tony, we're getting hacked. I need him gigabyte of RAM. It's too easy to hack. A hacker. All right. Hi, I'm Sammy Kamkar. Sammy is a privacy researcher and computer hacker. Today, we're going to talk about hacking's depiction in film and television. Swordfish hacking montage. <laughs> In this clip, we see a pretty recurring theme in a lot of movies that depict hacking, and that's a 3D visual interface. That's not my problem. That really has nothing to do with hacking. I don't know what the f is going on in this place. Or is really not an efficient interface to use at all. A more accurate interface would be a console or terminal. Yeah. And that's simply because it's the most efficient way to obtain a lot of data. Oh, you can look at a lot of code, you can look, look at a lot of text or a database, and extract the information you want very quickly. Thank you. Italian job, hacking traffic lights. They use video feeds from intersections and specifically designed algorithms to predict traffic conditions and thereby control traffic lights. So all I did was come up with my own kick-ass algorithm to sneak in and now we own the place. See red light, green light. Many of these traffic light systems are actually controlled through systems called SCADA systems, which are industrial controllers that allow things like traffic lights. Lights are working fine, just an accident. In Los Angeles, a number of street lights were actually hacked several years ago. Oops. And many of these traffic lights are actually controlled over the internet and often don't even have a password to connect to them. Wow, but it's awesome. Is that not awesome? So, totally realistic. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> Chuck, hacking into the Federal Reserve. In this clip, we see a common theme, and that's pretty interfaces that really have nothing to do with hacking. Thanks for the help. There's too much information just coming up and down, and it's too quick for you to actually obtain any useful information. I'm sorry, are we still talking? You pretty much never see pop-ups when you're doing any sort of programming or hacking like this. Who are you? In the middle of the clip, they also talk about optimizing their compilation. You know what? You actually have a little hiccup there at the bottom of your page. A compiler can't optimize a value away like that. What they're talking about is actually optimizing something within code, and you're typically doing compiling when you're writing some source code, and then you're compiling it into a program or binary that you can later run. You seem to know your way around the computer. It's kind of unrelated to what they're doing. Oh, no, I'm losing. So they did take some programming jargon and throw it in the middle there. Rookie mistake, it sure won't happen again. Skyfall, MI6 gets hacked. He's using a polymorphic engine to mutate the code. Whenever I try to gain access, it changes. It's like solving a Rubik's Cube that's fighting back. The 3D graphics here are similar to what you see in Swordfish. Oh, They're not really representative of anything you'd actually see. Oh, shit. Unlike Swordfish, there are more realistic aspects in this clip. For one, they're talking about polymorphic code. He's using a polymorphic engine to mutate the code. Polymorphic code is a program that essentially changes itself to try to hide itself. To conceal its true purpose. Our filters will no longer work, and it can continue to spread. They talk a little bit about that in this clip. Whenever I try to gain access, it changes. They show hex code, which could be of the virus. It's just another way to represent binary data or binary information. And that is pretty accurate. However, for the purpose of the plot, they do add Granborough. Granborough. Which is not real hex code. Oh. As all hex characters are 0 through 9 or A through F. But they show that for the purpose of the plot. I told you. Hackers competing with another hacker. Hey. What? Unbelievable. A hacker. That's enough. This clip opens with a sequence that we would call social engineering. I don't play well with others. Which is communicating with someone, pretending to be someone else, and trying to extract information that helps you break into a machine or target computer. Yeah, okay, acid burn. That's enough. Besides the unrealistic visuals, this is actually something kind of common. Yeah. When you might hack into a machine and you find that someone else has already actually hacked in. Shit! At this point, you do something kind of funny. Revenge. Your goal is actually to patch the machine to prevent any other hackers from breaking in, and you're actually helping the target. The sensitive type. But you'll often leave a back door so that you can come back in. What? A back door is a piece of software that you can run on a machine that grants you access in the future without the authorized users ever knowing you're inside the machine. You're the moron that's been invading my turf? Yeah. War Games, 1980s hacking. Are those your grades? Yeah. I don't think that I deserved an F. Do you? 
This is actually an accurate representation of hacking back in the 1980s. All right. Back then, it was called freaking. Freaking with a PH as in phone hacking. Yeah, weird, isn't it? In this case, he's actually dialing into a computer network over a telephone line. Dialing into the school's computer? Except when you would dial into a dial-up, you were dialing into an ISP or internet service provider. Here, he's actually dialing directly into the computer that controls the grades. They change the password every couple of weeks, but I know where they write it down. And this is exactly how bulletin board systems or BBSs worked back then, and a number of other systems as well. Yeah, okay. Bye. Accessing a server, Tron Legacy. We will be making our debut on Tokyo's Nikkei Index. OS 12 is the most secure operating system ever released. Many films will depict hacking as accessing a machine and installing some malicious software. OS 12. Whoa, still a few bugs. However, I don't really consider that hacking. How am I supposed to explain that? In this case, he's breaking into a place, physically accessing a computer that doesn't ask for a password, that has no encryption, or has no other authorization. So he's simply accessing a computer and uploading a virus. A little gift. Hacking into a hospital, Mr. Robot. Hospitals, a heavily networked one like this are almost too easy to hack. I can make my health records look like every other obedient zombie out there. Mr. Robot consistently demonstrates real hacking and pretty reasonable scenarios. Thanks. In this case, he's hacking into a hospital because they have pretty lax security. This is William Highsmith. He is the IT department. He's also an idiot. And their technology is extremely old. He uses useless security software that runs on Windows 98. Which is pretty accurate when you're talking about most hospitals. And he's supposed to protect their network from people like me? Additionally, the interfaces in this clip are actually realistic. You don't have to worry. Recently, we've heard of actual hospitals getting hacked, having malware and ransomware installed, and even some parts shutting down simply due to the lack of security and old systems. He never stood a chance. NCIS, stopping a hack. No way. I'm getting hacked. Uh, oh, Portsky? It's moving too fast. Using our connection to the Infos database, sever it. I can't. What is that, video game? No, Tony, we're getting hacked. I don't know what, what we want to say about this. <laughs> it's too much. I've never seen code like this. Stop the pop-ups. Oh, this is not good. Defending against a hacker, untraceable. Whoever is behind the site is local and wants attention. We'll shut them down. We are black holing these IPs, but every time we shut one down, a new mirror pops up. The site's IP keeps changing constantly. Each new address is an exploited server. This clip is extremely accurate. Nice touch. A hacker has a domain name. How do you know? The US keeps taking down the IP addresses of the domain name and the IP address is essentially the physical address of that domain. Oh. However, the hacker has so many other IPs or machines on the internet hacked that he or she is able to replace them very quickly. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Now, they state that the name server and registrar are hosted in Russia. The domain registrar and the name servers are all in Russian. Which they have no jurisdiction over. No jurisdiction there. The registrar is where you get your domain name, such as wired.com, and the name server points the domain name, like wired.com, to the IP address. There's a connection. In this case, the one thing they got wrong is the U.S. does have jurisdiction over the .com. Oh, God. So the U.S. would be able to take down any .com domain name. How patriotic. CSI Cyber. Clickbait. The ads are redirecting site users to what could be a fictitious pharmacy. Looks like a normal ad, right? And this is the code for the ad, but there's actually two codes written right on top of each other. A clickbaiting scheme. Right. Part of this clip is somewhat accurate. Good work! Being able to hack into a web server and modify the code so that users who visit that site are then affected. The fake ad is masking the legitimate ad. Is a real thing that happens. Quite common, actually. What? However, the combination of codes being layered on top of each other, it's not really accurate. Could be a coincidence. If you're viewing the source code, you're pretty much viewing everything. Peekaboo! So, not so realistic in this case. No. The net, disassembling a virus. I don't know how these things happen. You know, I just ordered that security program last week. What's it called? Gatekeeper? Well, that's what they all say. But not to worry, everything's under control. It's gonna be okay. We run into the same theme where the interfaces themselves are not very accurate. Yeah, I know. However, everything that's actually happening here is quite accurate. I appreciate it. Essentially, she's taking a virus and she's disassembling it. One keystroke will wipe out your whole system. What that means is she's taking the actual binary executable and turning it into machine code, which is the type of code that your computer or CPU actually executes. Then she's turning it into a format that she can read to see what it's actually doing. Come on, why don't you just tell me what this is about? So that she can help 
whomever gotten hacked, let them know what has happened and how to resolve the issue. Thank you. This is something that actually there are dedicated teams and companies for today. What, you're kidding, right? Oh, God, I'm sorry. I thought you'd heard. Breaching the firewall. Castle. Oh, we got a problem. What? Someone synced a rat to one of my servers. A remote access tool. We're being hacked. Uh-oh. What? They're on to us. They're trying to track our IP address. Oh, can you stop it? No. But I can slow him down. One thing we see in a lot of clips is people attempt to slow hackers down or slow something down, but really there's nothing to slow down. It's either happening or it's not. We have to stop him. However, there are some accuracies here. They do use a rat or remote, remote access, access tool. tool. And there are actual tools called rats, which allow you access into machines that you otherwise shouldn't necessarily have access to. The interface is quite inaccurate. Sorry about that. It also seems that TV likes to think that hackers send a lot of animal photos, as we've seen with the dog in Tron Legacy, Whoa. and as we see here with lots and lots of cats. What the hell? The Matrix Reloaded, hacking into a power grid. In this, we see some realism. How do you know that? We see uh, an actual Unix terminal, and someone is actually using a, a fictitious tool called SSH Nuke. And what it pretty much does is it gives them access to the power grid. How does he always know? It drops them into a root shell on a Unix machine, which actually is pretty realistic. Thanks. And then they use another tool, SSH, to log into another machine as root, which is the administrative privilege. It gives you pretty much full access to do whatever you want. Yeah, she can do that. Unrealistic you have the SSH nuke tool, which is not a real tool. Additionally, most power grids aren't on the internet, but there's some pretty good foreshadowing going on here as more and more are becoming connected as it simply makes them easier to maintain. There is nothing you can do to stop it. Hacking on a cell phone, Iron Man 2. And local intelligence on the ground indicating- Hold on my second bike. Let me see. I need him. What does he do? If you'll direct your attention to said screens, I believe that's North Korea. In this clip, we see Tony Stark using his mobile device to actually hack into multiple TV screens and monitors. Turn that off. And it's actually kind of realistic. You're welcome. As you could easily break into, say, a Chromecast or Apple TV, and most smart TVs are actually internet connected now, so. It's working. There's a big attack surface, a lot of ways to actually break into these TVs Whoa. and cast something that Otherwise, you shouldn't. You can count on me to pleasure myself. Weird science, stealing processing power. The problem is your computer's a wimp, and we need a lot more power than this. That's the problem. What do you suggest? We have another clip with some graphical interface that isn't very accurate. I know that, but you know we can we can use it. And some fun 3D visuals. <laughs> However, the act of breaking into a computer, especially one with more computing power and resources than your own, to try to crack something or decrypt something is pretty accurate today. Love it. The clips we saw in War Games and Weird Science take place in the same time period. However, what we saw in War Games was a lot more accurate than what was depicted here. We also get another classic access denied screen. Yeah. Yeah. Live free or die hard, executing a virus. In this clip, they don't really show actually any hacking. They do show running a virus. However, to actually run a virus or upload a virus, you already must have access to the target system. Thanks for that. Essentially, you, you will need to have found a vulnerability that you can run the virus on. And only then can you actually execute that virus. Snowden. Surveillance. Think of it as a Google search, except instead of searching only what people make public, we're also looking at everything they don't. So emails, chats, SMS, whatever. Yeah, but which people? The whole kingdom, Snow White. This is real. Seriously? There's actually a program called X Key Score that the NSA uses. X Key Score is under 702 authority, which means no warrants. That we actually found out about from Snowden after he leaked a ton of documents to the press. As a matter of principle. Our government and other governments do have the capabilities to do this sort of thing. The social network, Hackathon. We have 10 minutes to get root access to a Python web server, expose its SSL encryption, and then intercept all traffic over its secure port. They're hacking! Yes, yeah, all behind a fixed firewall emulator, but here's the beauty. Every 10th line of code written, they have to trick a shot. This is interesting because it's actually rumored to be true that Facebook would have these 
drinking, programming hackathons. Yeah. Although I don't expect so many people and uh, so much of a party atmosphere. <laughs> the type of system that he's talking about hacking into is pretty accurate. Have 10 minutes to get root access to a Python web server. This sort of thing is actually typical at DEF CON, a yearly hacking conference in Vegas. People are hacking into each other's systems, defending against other hackers, and again, a lot of drinking. Welcome to Facebook. <laughs> Transformers, alien hacking. Are you getting this? I think they're hacking the network again. They are planting a virus. In this clip, they're trying to listen to a hack. Do you hear that? However, you're not actually going to be able to do that for this type of hack. No way. Or hacking into a lot of computers. You will listen to sound, however, if you're trying to listen to certain types of radio frequencies and recognize what kind of sound or modulation it might be. This is a direct match to the signal in Qatar. There actually was a hack recently in Dallas where someone used radio frequency to set off every emergency siren in Dallas. Breaking encryption, under siege two. See here, access encoded. Gigabyte of RAM should do the trick. We're in. In this clip, he's attempting to break some encryption by adding a gigabyte of RAM. Gigabyte of RAM should do the trick. But adding that gigabyte of RAM really is not relevant to breaking the encryption here. Oh. You might need some significant memory or storage space, but it's not something you'll do in the middle of your operation. Really? So, not that realistic. Yeah. Black Hat. NSA hacking. You asked him to change his password? When he downloaded the PDF, what he downloaded was the key logger. That was a pretty long password for someone who can't actually differentiate the difference between a PDF file and an executable. What he downloaded was the key logger. Because really, he downloaded something that looked like a document but because it was actually a keylogger, that means it was a program that executed and, and ran an application. The real hit is still to come. Like keyloggers are a pretty common way to access information from an individual. So if you want to record their keystrokes, see what they're typing, Guys. learn passwords, websites they visit, usernames, and other private information, a keylogger is the typical way that someone will install that on your machine and learn that information about you. He is in Jakarta. Avengers 2, Age of Ultron. Ultron hacking Jarvis. I believe your intentions to be hostile. I'm here to help. Stop. Please help me. At the rate of progress with machine learning and artificial intelligence, something like this where two different systems could actually begin to learn about each other, communicate with each other, and actually attack each other. This is rage. The visualized 3D orbs in real space are not so accurate. This is insane. In the future, machines will be able to think and will have access to physical components that they can actually move around. I am a program. I am without form. This feels weird. So we could see something like this. However, the actual orbs of electricity or balls of electricity, that is pretty much set in science fiction. We're out of my field here. Criminal Minds. Hackers competing. First, we need you to look up the name Colby Baylor. Well, this might be the coolest girl I've ever met, but her gooey is mind-blowing. Well, that's weird. Oh, no, you don't. Are you want to play? This is also kind of similar to Hackers, where two hackers were competing, taking over control of a machine. It was a bit more accurate in Hackers, <laughs> no. as they were essentially competing on the same target system, trying to prevent the other person from accessing it. In this, you see they're competing on a system, but then someone else's system actually gets hacked. What the hell? So in this case, there are multiple systems getting hacked and it's just a little bit less realistic. This isn't good. They mentioned the Linux operating system. It's completely Linux-based, open source programming. And you don't see this in government systems, I mean, outside of like Switzerland. Which actually is used in plenty of governments. Are you serious? There's lots of open source software is used sort of across the world, uh, including our government. Right, I get it. The GUI comment is not too accurate. Her GUI is mind-blowing. Usually when you're breaking into something, you're not actually gonna run into any GUI or graphical user interface. Well, that's weird. And even if you do, it's usually not that exciting. Sneakers. Freaking. I'm gonna bounce this call through nine different relay stations throughout the world and off two satellites. Fort Meade, Maryland, good afternoon. National Security Agency, Director of Operations, please. Who is this, please? It's my dime, I'll ask the questions. 
It started the trace. This is a cool demonstration of freaking, where they're actually jumping not just to one other machine over the phone. Who are you? Mr. Abbott. They made the second leg. But actually relaying from phone to phone to phone. Can you guarantee my safety? Where is the item? Hang up, they've almost got us. Hang up, fish. Freaking is not as popular anymore as most machines are internet connected rather than dial up or phone connected. We make the call, but we make it our way. Algorithm. Hacking via email. You know where the weakest link in any security system is? It's you, with your shitty passwords, and how you share every part of your life online. And now I own Sam Novak's computer. In this clip, they're not showing too much of the actual hacking, but he does mention that he's exploiting the kernel. I'm just exploiting the vulnerability her kernel access has created. This is a pretty difficult to do. However, there has been a recent vulnerability in antivirus software. There's always a way in. Where if you received an email with a very specific exploit, it could actually exploit the antivirus software running in your kernel, which is essentially your operating system, and give the attacker full control of your computer. It means they work for me. I think that's what they're implying here, even though they're not really showing the actual exploit. What difference does that make to me? Conclusion. Hollywood has the challenge of depicting hacking, which can actually be quite a challenge because it's not that visually stimulating. However, it is always exciting when I do see a clip that actually is realistic. <laughs>